I've just had the most amazing experience, a glimpse of the future. I've seen a living, beating heart built from scratch in a laboratory. It's a major breakthrough, a vital step towards custom-made human body parts for transplants. Now, say you had a serious heart or kidney disease. There'd be no more waiting months, maybe years, for a donor. Your doctor would simply order a new organ designed especially for you. Imagine what that would mean to the thousands of Australians now on the list for organ transplants. And as you'll see, this isn't some scientist's crazy dream. It's already happening. This is the new frontier of science, blurring the line between human and animal. Custom-made organs growing inside sheep, an ear growing in a dish, a man-made finger, and perhaps most stunning of all, a heart made in a jar, alive and beating. A living heart. It looks so nice. I'm at Minnesota University, coming face to face with the future. And you built this. So we built this. We Professor Doris this. Taylor is a heart repair heart. specialist, changing transplant medicine forever, creating body heart. parts it's made to order. We said, wouldn't it be cool if we could build a heart? <laughs> 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 there aren't enough to go around, wouldn't it be nice? And how are we going to do that? It was a simple but brilliant idea. Professor Taylor literally grew this heart from scratch using the cells of a rat. So we started with a dead rat heart. We literally used soap detergent to wash all the cells out, burst the cells, wash them out, and we ended up with a ghost heart, a scaffold. Then we this transplanted heart. new cells back in and we're teaching it how to be a heart and get stronger and beat harder every day. And look what happened when they stitched the heart back into a live rat. Well, how did you react? <laughs> I think the exact moment was yes. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. It was incredible. It was, it was one of those wow moments in life. Professor Taylor's breakthrough could revolutionise the entire transplant system. In Australia, we have one of the lowest organ donor rates in the world. And of the 1,800 people waiting for life-saving transplants, at least one will die each week. Hospitals could literally grow complex organs, like much-needed hearts, on demand. For people who already are living with heart failure, the hope is that we can take cells from their body and build an organ that matches their body. Take a scaffold from either a cada human cadaver or a pig, transplant those cells, grow it in the lab for six weeks, 12 weeks, few months, and then transplant that. People like Brooke Seymour can only dream of the possibilities. <laughs> The horse is looking through the window. This young mum from Brisbane contracted a fatal condition called cardiomyopathy, probably while pregnant with her son Manny. They told me that my heart will not continue working as hard as it is for much longer. And what was the bottom line? That I had to have a heart transplant. And how did you react to that? Well, obviously, I'd had a, I'd had a son who was 18 months old, and I thought, oh, am I going to get to see him get married? <laughs> So, you know, that, that, those type of things cross my mind. That you wouldn't see him grow up and that yeah. you wouldn't be his mum. That's right. Mm. Is Grandad feeding the sheep some milk? Brooke needs a new heart and within two years. If she could grow her own, it would mean an end to the terrible daily vigil of waiting for a donor organ. We try to live a normal life as possible, but we also make sure our phone's close at hand. And are there particular times of day when the phone rings that you think, yeah, well, your heart goes to your throat? Well, uh, you know, if you receive a call late at night, you think, oh, you know, this is the call. Um, and, you know, my, my heart races. <laughs> and I always actually get a bit panicky about that. <laughs> Wouldn't it be good one day to have a bank of hearts just ready to go? Oh, that would be wonderful. <laughs> I guess that would be a dream come true for me. <laughs> Back in Professor Taylor's Minnesota lab, her team is already looking beyond that dream, as well as the heart 
They've also grown a liver and plan to produce a whole raft of other organs. There are far more kidney transplants than there are heart transplants every year. Liver, lung, cystic fibrosis, pancreas. If we could cure a kid with diabetes, that'd be fabulous. And so that would be the same technique. Take the organ, you clean it out, you apply stem cells, and it functions. Bottom line is, if it gets a blood supply, we can build it. My classroom is actually pretty close to where everything is. And then this young woman is living proof time. that it can um, be done. I love this campus. Uni it student Caitlin McNamara suffers spina bifida and rarely left home before doctors grew day, her a new system. bladder. Before you had the operation, what was it like? It was like, I'm saying it's like a nightmare because I just didn't feel like, I never hang, hung out with my friends, like I wouldn't leave the house. Caitlin's bladder never fully developed, so doctors created a mould, added Caitlin's own cells and grew a new one. It may not be as complex as a heart or a liver, but it's an extraordinary achievement nonetheless. Is life better now? Life is a lot better now. So now you can have a regular teenage life? Yes. That's a wonderful actually, thing, hey? I look forward to walking out of my house and saying, I don't have to come back for a while. That remarkable success has spawned a whole range of cutting edge advances, each one more stunning than the last. This is an ear. It's an ear, exactly. And basically what you're seeing is she's actually uh, coding this over and over with, with cells. Dr. Anthony Atala, who spent 20 years developing the bladder, is now attempting even more intricate body parts in his North Carolina lab. But the basic principle's the same human stem cells grown on a polymer mold. Which is a fancy word for just a scaffold, if you will, a mold. Yeah. And uh, the, ch the, the concept is that once you coat it with the cells, the mold will go away and the tissue will take over. So we came back in two months, you'd have an ear? Correct. And are you good at fingers? Or are you better at ears? <laughs> well, we're better at ears so far. <laughs> fingers are harder? Fingers are much harder. Okay. Yeah. There is another way to grow organs, and that's to have animals grow them for you. Now, these sheep look like normal sheep, behave like sheep, sound like sheep, but they're not normal. In fact, they're partly human, 15% human. And this is where our story gets a little terrifying. On this experimental farm at the University of Nevada, Professor Eshmael Zanjani is showing us his science of the lambs. The surgeon here is feeling for an eight-week-old fetus inside its mother's womb. That's that's alive. That's that's a the baby lamb inside that's the, the sheep. That's the uterus. Yes. The unborn lamb is then injected with human stem cells. It's human into sheep. That's correct. And sewn back inside the mother. And get this: when that lamb is born in three months, it will be literally part human. They're still sheep? They're still sheep, but they contain human elements within them. The lamb will have the body of a sheep, but human cells in its organs, and those human parts will precisely match the person who provided the cells. The hope is, if these organs are transplanted back into the human patient, they'll be compatible. So you could put the sheep liver into the human. That's the correct. sheep part of it is, is attacked and killed off That's correct. by the host's body, the human's as body. As soon as possible. And you're left with essentially uh, a human organ. That's correct. It is possible to think of a farm that has uh, a number of animals that are readily available for transplant purposes. Imagine that, your own flock of sheep carrying your organs in case you need a transplant. Sound like science fiction? Well, here's the scary part. If the human and animal DNA were somehow to mix in the sheep, highly unlikely but still possible, Dr. Zanjani will have created a monster, a strange new hybrid creature. What would you do with a, with a mutant sheep? Would you kill it or start a college fund for it? You would have to sacrifice them. 
could you just slaughter a sheep, though, that was partly human? Yes, um, I think we, should, we could, because the way... It's a tough one, isn't it? I'm not sure it's a tough one, but I can't quite get my head around it right now. Um, I don't know. This is something that society has to be start thinking about. I don't know. The trouble is, a lot of this speculative science fiction type, you know, biotech innovation is just that. It's a science fiction. Look, Dr. Dr. Patrick Dixon is a former physician who lectures in, in biological so trends. Century. And quite frankly, taking human cells and injecting them into the fetus of a sheep in order to create a hybrid organ is already looked to me not only tacky and yuck, but so last century I can't believe that anyone wants to waste medical research money doing such a crazy thing. What's the Frankenstein scenario with what's going on here? We're in very strange territory here because of course I'm asking myself, what happens when it's a one in a thousand mix? What happens when it's a one in a hundred mix? Or as we've seen here, what happens when it's a 15% mix? What happens when it's a 51% mix? I mean, what point do you decide that this animal is actually eligible for human rights? Your opponents call it Frankenstein science. Is it? No. The sheep, the animal that contains these organs and cells remains as completely sheep. It does not think like a human, sense the human feelings, uh, cannot talk. It, <laughs> it just remains sheep all the time and just speaks the sheep language, which is ba ba. <laughs> Science fiction or not, the fact is, none of this is far off fantasy. It's happening sooner than you think. For transplant patients everywhere, the brave new world can't come fast enough. I think we're years away and not decades away. It's not unreasonable to imagine that within the next four to five years we'll have some organ we can transplant. So this is a revolution. You know, you hate to say that about your own work, but we're certainly excited. And we think it's uh, a door. We think we've opened a door in the field of transplantation. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.